Imagine a school with no grades, where a student's passions, gifts, and interests are catered to and even encouraged where students are encouraged to explode things and are taught problem-solving skills and given real-world problems to fix. It doesn't sound real, does it? In 2014, disappointed with the education his sons were receiving, and in typical Musk fashion where if you don't like something, you build it better, Musk pulled his five young sons out of one of California's most prestigious private schools and asked Josh Don, his son's teacher at the time, if he'd join him at SpaceX to build a better school, a request from the SpaceX CEO to which Don would eventually agree. No, I just didn't see that uh, the re regular schools, just they weren't doing the things that I thought should be done. Like, you know, those two principles, they weren't uh, adhering to those principles. So I thought, well, let's see what we can do. Maybe creating a school will be better. This is how Ad Astra, which means to the stars in Latin, was founded in 2014. Today we are looking at Elon Musk's school at SpaceX and how it was different than a traditional school. And if you think starting a new school by hiring your son's teacher is cool, you won't believe the things we're going to reveal in this video. So make sure you stick till the end. In 2014, Ad Astra was established on the SpaceX facility in Hawthorne, California shortly after Musk withdrew his five sons from a Los Angeles K-8 school for gifted children. Musk hired Joshua Don, one of Merman's teachers, to oversee Ad Astra. Musk's children, twins born in 2004 and triplets born in 2006, made up more than half of the student body at Ad Astra in the first year of the new school. The rest were all children of SpaceX employees. Ad Astra was education reimagined and would focus on two core principles. The first principle was to group children in classes by ability instead of age. Traditional schools group children by age, assuming that children of the same age are generally of similar intelligence and learn at the same speed. A principle which Musk fundamentally disagrees with. Um, you know, because some people love English or languages, some people love math, some people love music, mm. and uh, and have different abilities at different times. It makes more sense to, to cater the education to match their aptitudes and abilities. Mm -hmm. so I think that's one principle. The second principle is don't teach to the tool, teach to the problem. Another is that it's important to teach uh, teach problem solving or teach to the problem not to the tools mm -hmm. so this would be like let's say um, you're trying to teach people about uh, how engines work or you know you could start by a, tr more, a more traditional approach would be to say well we're going to teach you all about screwdrivers and wrenches and and you're going to have a course on screwdrivers a course on wrenches and all these things and it's mm. this is a very difficult way to, to do it a much mm -hmm. better way would be like here's the engine now mm. let's take it apart. How are we going to take it apart? Oh, you mm. need a screwdriver. That's what the screwdriver is for. You need a wrench. That's what the wrench is for. Mm -hmm. um, and then a very important thing happens, which is that the relevance of the tools becomes apparent. Instead of learning about a tool, students use the tools to solve problems, learning the function and purpose of the tools along the way. For example, listing the tools you need to take an engine apart isn't nearly as educational as trying to disassemble and reassemble the engine yourself. By putting in the actual work, a student is able to learn the tool's relevance as they go. Students are enrolled in a science, math, engineering, robotics, coding, and artificial intelligence focused curriculum. Sports and music are not taught, although there was dodgeball at lunch. Nor are any foreign languages, as Musk believes that real-time translation devices and software will soon make teaching languages irrelevant. Everything about Ad Astra is far from ordinary, from its lack of grades to the secrecy surrounding its admissions procedure. The school's admission application is unique as well and states that the admissions process is designed to identify students and families that could significantly contribute to the creativity and diversity of the school. Applicants are then asked to fill out basic information such as whether their parents work for one of Musk's companies, an optional parent statement, and an example of a project that shows the student's ambition or originality. Lastly, but most importantly, applicants are asked to answer one of three synthesis questions developed by child psychologists and designed to test a student's reasoning ability and creativity. Students ranging in age from 7 to 14 study in groups 
and while they do receive grades for their work, they do not receive letter grades at the conclusion of the semester. Spots were reportedly limited to children of SpaceX personnel, and even then, only by invitation. The trade-off to Musk's generosity is that Ad Astra represents some of his more unorthodox viewpoints. Science, math, engineering, and ethics are said to be heavily emphasized at the institution. According to Josh Don, it does not teach sports or music at all, and languages are largely ignored because Musk believes that we will all soon have instantaneous real-time computer-aided translation. There is also a focus on the rise of artificial intelligence, AI, which Musk has on numerous occasions publicly expressed his fear of. Geneva is a module in the Ad Astra curriculum where teams explore and debate a variety of ethical and geopolitical issues. Another module, A-Frame, entails making everything from weather balloons to fighting robots and blowing things up. Ad Astra's curriculum is rewritten every year, with students choosing around half of the subject matter. Environmental policy, space exploration, and North Korea were amongst recent projects. Creative writing, physics, chemistry, mathematics, and of course, computer science are among the more traditional subjects. Students at Ad Astra also have access to laptops for 60 to 70% of the working day. Students learn to code in Scheme, Swift, and Scratch through self-guided online courses such as Code Academy, edX, and the Khan Academy. At one point, Ad Astra had 20 separate student-built websites online at the same time. Some relying on the school's own digital economy, called Astra, to promote entrepreneurship and trade amongst the students. Students also participate in creation sessions with UCLA artists, participate in a month-long street art project with a mobile graffiti studio, and tour a company that creates mini amusement parks. The symposium module in which students present and defend a concept in front of hundreds of adults reinforces the impression that Ad Astra is geared to produce the next generation of type A digital entrepreneurs. While Ad Astra is no longer in operations, it has morphed into what is now called Astra Nova. It seems too simple to say that Musk may have just revolutionized education, all while building the world's best EVs and rockets. That brings us to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please leave a like and comment below. Also, if you're new to the channel, subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when we upload a new video. We'll see you guys in the next one.